All right, so after a few activations here, um, I'm still on December 16th. As you can see, some, some stuff has moved around. Um, a few things have happened. Um, I've got some cards over here in the Allied Actions and the Allied Command um, discard piles. Um, I needed to turn the, the camera off for a little bit. Um, just a few of the rules were... Um, I just kept not remembering or going back to them. Like, like I said, this game kind of uh, takes a lot of concentration for me because I'm, I'm so constantly worried that I'm missing um, minor rules or doing it wrong that I keep going back to the book to figure out that actually I'm, I'm really not doing it wrong. Or if I am, I, I, I can't tell that I am. So um, part of that's that perfectionist in me that just doesn't want to show you guys... Um, you know, that I'm playing the game wrong. Um, but I think I'm ready to kind of show you a little bit um, and go from there. So I'm basically at the German um, command phase. And um, I think at the moment what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play a card for you. So I'm basically going to play the 5th Panzer Army. Um, so right now, these cores, um, if we were on day um, 25, 25th, 27th, and 29th, or 22nd, 26th, and 28th, they would basically be out of fuel. Um, any of my mechanized units would not be able to move. But that's not the case right now because um, I'm not on those days. I'm on the 16th, so those don't apply. Um, I have a few options here, um, but I'm going to go ahead and just activate any one unit. Um, so we're going to go over here, um, and let's basically kind of see where we're at. So we're over, we're going to be over here, um, and the opposition has been pretty great over in this area for me right now. Um, I haven't been able to get a whole lot done, but I think right now we're going to go ahead and activate this infantry unit. Um, over here, and we're basically, um, I'm going to try to break free. Um, I'm going to attempt to, um, do a combat and get him pushed back. Um, because that seems to be really my only option at the moment. Um, so let's see what else I, I have here. So I've got some cards. Let me see if I can get you an angle. So right now I'm looking at my combat tactic cards. Um, to see if there's anything that I can play that may help me. So as you'll see, some of these say um, <clears throat> the G is only for my um, German. I can't use the A. That would be in the Allied Solo game. Um, but basically, I'm going to go ahead and use Assault Coordination. Um, and Assault Coordination is going to allow me to activate the unit, um, any friendly adjacent units for the attack. Um, and as you'll see, like I said, the numbers up here on the top are going to be my command value. Um, so I'm at four. So what we got going here is I have uh, two units so with a strength of uh, four and three. So it gives me a total of seven. Um, and this guy over here, is, um, he's really strong. He, as you can see, he's got three steps. Um, so basically... Um, this guy has two steps, so we're immediately going to draw two combat chits out of my cup. I'm going to lay those down. Um, I will go ahead and grab two more, one for each unit. All right, and let's pull this one out here. Just because I still don't know all the rules by heart, let's take a look. So I am going to need a plus one chip for my combat tactic. I don't have any elite units. Um, but I do need a plus one for three steps. Having a three step unit. So that's going to give me an additional two. And before I do any further, I need to draw an allied command. And this is for the U.S. Army. No command. Therefore, it does not do anything for me. So they won't get any bonuses from that. 
Um, so let's go ahead and take a look and see what we got here. I'm going to set my cards over here to the side. So I'm going to go ahead and line these up and I'm going to look for the P for priority because those will take priority over the other ones if there's any. Which looks like there's a few. So I'm going to set these ones to the side for a minute just so we can take a look and see what we got here. Alright, so this one here is Allied Air Power. Um, I did not use that um, combat tactic, so this does not, um, well this would be Allied, but a German one would not matter either. Um, so a large attack, a large attack, let's see, do I have a large attack? Let's take a look. Applies to an attack with at least seven chits are drawn. Uh, I have four, five, six, so I do not have a large attack. So this one is going to do no good. We're going to set it to the side. Um, this one here is um, a dispersed unit, which um, dispersed or uh, unsupplied, which those are neither. And defender adjacent. Uh, the defender is adjacent, so this one will apply. Um, the Defender is not an elite unit, and the Defender is green, so this applies. Um, the odds are they, a, is, it a six, is it greater than 6 to 1, or well, equal to or greater? So I've got 7, 3, no it's not, let's go ahead and flip it. Um, the Combat Engineer card was not played, so again, we're going to go ahead and move this one to the side. Is it lower than a 3 to 1? No. Is it greater than an 8 to 1? No, it's not. And is it larger than a 5 to 1? No. Lower than a 3 to 1? No. So what we have here is the defender takes one hit from the defender green and then on the defender adjacent attacker takes a hit and defender actually reflects deflects a hit so my def the defender over here nothing's going to happen to the defender now um, attacker has to take one the first one has to be taken as a step loss so we'll just go ahead and we'll flip him over and all of these chits get put to the side. They do not go back in the cut because a blue chip is not drawn. So we just go ahead and set them to the side. Um, so these get discarded in the appropriate discard piles for my supplemental and primary. And now it's the allied. So we go ahead and draw oop, an allied command card. Help if I keep the cards on the table, guys. So we draw these. U.S. Army. So we do have the 16th to the 20th event engineers. Well, let's go ahead and take a look and see what that does. So, event. Like I said, I have to keep looking in the, the, the sheets. Um, I haven't figured out everything yet. Um, I haven't learned, so I've got to continually look. Um, you know, because there's a lot in this, this, uh, solo. So, conduct one of the following in priority order. Replace a roadblock in a VP hex or in an allied supply with an allied reserve unit. If more of the roadblock road on the map, replace the marker in the highest HV hex. If tied the west, westernmost, then the northernmost. If a reserve unit is placed, the engineer event is complete. If no RB on the map or no reserve unit can be placed, proceed to priority two. So that would be place a roadblock marker in an unoccupied road position hex with a hold value under three within two hexes of a supply German unit. Okay, so let me go ahead here and let's grab my roadblocks. So 
Alright guys, I thought I had those out. There they are. I only grab one here. So within two hexes on a road. So that was, let me make sure I place it. A whole value of under three within two hexes of supplied German unit. Um... So I do have supplied German unit here. So I'll go ahead and place the road mark right here, uh, the roadblock mark. So look, that's going to cause it. Um, it's. It, I'm gonna. It's, I'm gonna have to have an infantry unit basically go in with a combat engineer's car or an engineer's car, excuse me, and remove that roadblock. That is going to also force my mechanized units not to be able to um, move into that area. Um, the roadblocks have a whole series of rules that are going to um, basically halt movement in that area. Okay, um, so that would be the turn for the allied player. Um, now sometimes what does happen is that you will draw, and as you can see, I did get a no command. But for example, if um, something like earlier I did get a um, U.S. Army, uh, Third Army Corps, and then basically after that, I, I, I find the first one that's applicable, right, and I choose it, and then I draw the action card, and it basically tells me what happens. So it has, like, the indicator number, um, the units in that indication, and then if the situation applies, well, here's the action that I follow based off that situation. Now the problem that was hanging me up earlier is I tried to figure I was trying to figure out like it's you know I got to make sure that I'm you know because sometimes it's like oh wait does this apply and then I start looking in the book and then my brain's like oh yeah remember you read this earlier and so then I'm sitting there digging to find that rule and by the time I got to that rule I'm like well wait that doesn't really apply and then I try to go back and then I'm totally get lost on what I was doing to begin with um you know, so I think that, um, you know, I'm going to continue to um, play it um, probably half off the camera and then half on um, for a little bit just so that I can try to make sure I'm hammering out some of these smaller rules and you're not watching me, you know, silence while I read a, an instruction manual three or four times just to make sure. Um, you know, but but in general, what, what I've come to understand is that um, the... The Allied's pretty unpredictable because, you know, with those command cards, um, you know, it's hit or miss. I mean, something could really happen. Um, they're going to start moving and, you know, obviously, well, now they're placing roadblocks and it's, it's, it's going to push it and make it harder for me to get out. You know, that first turn was basically um, the Germans attacking to create space and gaps to get to the road to try to push out and, and try to... Um, get off the map pretty much i mean i need to um exit the map to start scoring points i mean i haven't really scored any victory points and you know you get into turn 20 um you know it's very easy to lose without any victory points so i need to start holding um some of these these places on the map out here that show you know five victory points or you know two victory points and i need to escape off the map and actually earn some points um, so it'll it'll be pretty interesting to see how this plays out, and um, like I said, I'll come back. Um, I'm not gonna quit or give up on the game. It may just take me a little bit longer than I was hoping to, um, just because I don't want to play it wrong. I want to give you as much information as I can, and uh, you know, I think the second time I play it and the third time, obviously, is going to be easier. Um, it's just the the solo versus the two player. I have no issues read the instruction manual and I played it with a couple of guys who had never played war games um, of this caliber before never played hex encounter you know they played the you know some heroes of Normandy by um, devil pick games they, they played some you know I think tide of iron they played some games but nothing like hex encounter war games and I was easily able to walk them through the game um, fairly simple without too much um, problem and and they enjoyed it and so i figured hey i'll jump into the solo game we'll just walk right through it it'll be a breeze and 
you know um obviously that that's not what happened um there's it's much to me it's much more complicated just the the little bit of differences that i kept trying to um bring it to a two-player my i came in with a two-player mindset rather than the solo mindset and i think that tripped me up but thanks for watching and we'll get back to it and we'll uh we'll go over some more activations